The final shape launches on June 4th, and in order to be ready, there are certain things you absolutely must do before it launches. Especially if you're one of the many people who didn't play a lot within the past year, there's quite a bit that you missed. For example, there are certain weapons and currencies that you need to get your hands on before they get removed in Final Shape, and there are also important events and quests that will no longer be available once the expansion launches. So from weapons that are going away to expiring materials you need to turn in, here is the comprehensive list of what to do before Final Shape. The first thing you should do is head over to this little terminal right here and claim all of these free materials from Rahul's secret stash. You can claim the stash materials right now, and you will be able to claim the stash again when Final Shape launches. It is super important that you claim it immediately, because this terminal thing can only hold one stash at a time, so if you don't claim it now, you won't be able to claim it again for a second time in Final Shape. Next up, you should head over to the Hall of Champions from the free event called Into the Light. Here you will find an instant boost to the highest power level in the game, so if you're not max power, congratulations, you've now hit the pinnacle power cap of level 1810. You can also obtain some exotics here in case you don't have them, but even if you do, you might as well claim everything here to use as infusion or dismantle for free glimmer. You should also make sure to do this on all of your other characters as well to get all three of your guardians decked out in max power gear and ready to face the witness in the final shape. The Super Black Shader is perhaps the most popular shader of all time, and unfortunately you won't be able to get it after Final Shape launches. As you can see from these graphics on Bungie's website, this shader will become unavailable on June 3rd, so be sure to pick it up before then. In order to get it, you'll need to reach max rank with Shax and also finish all of the brave weapon quests from Into the Light. The next important thing to do is go and spend about 99% of your legendary shards. When the final shape launches, this currency is being completely removed from the game, so in order to retain the value of your legendary shards, you should look into converting them into another currency. First of all, Glimmer will become a more important currency in final shape, so you can convert some of your legendary shards into Glimmer until you reach the Glimmer cap of 500,000. After that, you should go and spend almost all of your remaining legendary shards to buy tons of phantasmal fragments on the moon. Simply just visit the lectern and then buy as many of these as you can. This is because after Final Shape launches, you can visit the Crypt Ark and sell these Phantasmal Fragments in exchange for Glimmer. 10 Phantasmal Fragments will give you 10,000 Glimmer, and there is no cap on how many Fragments you can have. Unless Bungie decides to remove this method, this is by far the best way to essentially convert your shards into a long-lasting Glimmer supply that you can use during Final Shape. The other thing you'll probably want to do is buy max upgrade modules from the gunsmith, and then go visit Hawthorne and buy a bunch of raid banners. If you do raids or dungeons at all, you'll probably want to get a lot of these, and I know most top players are stocking up absolutely ridiculous amounts of raid banners right now in order to prepare. If there's anything else that you've always wanted to spend your shards on, then feel free to do that as well before they are removed. Oh, also, the last thing to mention about Glimmer is that in the past, many players would buy a bunch of ships and sparrows and put them in the vault, and then dismantle them in the future to get Glimmer. However, this strategy is patched because Bungie is removing the Glimmer reward from dismantling ships and sparrows, so make sure to delete any extraneous ships or sparrows because soon they won't give you anything at all. The next thing you've absolutely got to do is log in at least once a week and claim the free Bright Dust that Bungie is giving away in the store. From now until Final Shape launches, you'll be able to get 700 free Bright Dust here every single week, and if you do this consistently, you'll be able to save up quite a fortune that you can spend on cool ornaments and other cosmetics. This of course resets every Tuesday, so just remember to check the store once a week when you log in. If you're not a fan of spending money on microtransactions, but still want to have cool Destiny fashion, well this is the perfect opportunity to do so. Bungie just recently reset all of the bounties from Ada 1 in the tower. This means you can do up to 10 synth bounties before the end of the season to unlock more of those valuable transmog materials. I still feel like this system is unnecessarily complicated and should just be removed, but at least for now, you have to continue doing this stuff if you want to unlock new gear for transmog. Something else you may want to do before Final Shape is Pantheon, the limited time event that begins on April 30th and ends on June 3rd. Pantheon is a raid gauntlet event with various challenges and amazing loot. Perhaps the most intriguing part though is how the event escalates in difficulty and rewards over time before it eventually disappears from the game on June 3rd. At first it will start out with just 4 bosses, but eventually it will progress up to 8 total bosses. 
Each time a new boss is added, there will also be new modifiers that change up and force you to adapt new strategies and techniques. This makes things interesting, because you won't be able to just fall asleep and use the same exact strategies that were invented four years ago. There will also be an escalating power level modifier, making each week progressively more challenging in terms of raw numbers. To reward you for this added difficulty though, each week will also provide better rewards and really make it worth your time. You can get adept raid loot, deep sight versions of raid weapons, and even exotic weapons. Some rewards are weekly and others are linked to pursuits or triumphs, but many will also depend on your performance. If you complete each encounter before the bonus timer expires, you'll be rewarded with a platinum score and the greatest rewards. So overall, this seems like a great opportunity to grab some raid loot that you don't have yet, and also if you're a skilled player, it seems like you'll be heavily rewarded for your efforts here. You'll be able to visit Shax to begin the Pantheon quest starting April 30th. Before Final Shape begins, you'll also want to check on your engram tracker and be sure to turn in all of your remaining engrams that are listed here. This is because they will all disappear as soon as Final Shape launches. However, you may want to wait until the end of the season before turning them in so that you can rank up the vendor as much as possible to get better loot. For example, if you reset your Crucible rank multiple times, you'll start getting extra rows of perks on each of your weapons from your engrams. It's also a good idea to delete any random junk you might have in your inventory because it's safe to say that there will be plenty of new items that demand inventory space in the final shape. Your vault could probably benefit from some cleaning as well to make room for new weapons, but keep in mind that you will be receiving 100 extra vault spaces in June. Next up, let's talk about weapons, because there are a handful of amazing weapons that you'll want to make sure you bring into the final shape. There are also some pretty special ones that are going away and will no longer be obtainable, so it's important to get those while you can. The weapons mentioned here are some of the best and easiest to get, and they should be a part of every player's arsenal. Starting off with the Brave Arsenal, these are the weapons from the Onslaught activity, and they're some of the most recognizable and powerful weapons in Destiny's history. You'll definitely want to be farming for these, because not only are they amazing weapons, but they also have exclusive limited time cosmetics that you'll only be able to get prior to Final Shape. When you get a shiny weapon to drop, it will look like this and have this special ornament, and the shiny aesthetics look amazing across all of these different weapons as you can see here. These weapons also come with bonus perks in each column, making them extra desirable and more likely to come with a good roll. Datto said, I experienced being genuinely excited for a loot drop for the first time in probably 4 plus years thanks to the holofoil shiny versions of weapons. Forgot what that was like. I'm in the same boat as him and I can't wait to get my hands on more of these weapons, and especially I want to get good rolls on Edge Transit, Forbearance, and Fallen Guillotine. These aren't craftable, but you will be able to deck out your random rolls with enhanced perks after the final shape drops. Since these are random rolls, and the chance of a weapon being shiny is pretty low, it might seem that it'll take forever to actually get a shiny weapon that also happens to have good perks on it. That is not actually the case though, thanks to these quests that you'll definitely want to complete as soon as possible. These quests will give you shiny, curated rolls of every single brave weapon with almost perfect perks. This way, everyone can get access to these weapons with the shiny cosmetics and good rolls with very little time investment, and I highly recommend that everyone do this. As I said, the shiny weapons with double perks will no longer be available after Final Shape, so this is kind of the ultimate I was there weapon that you can show off to players in the future. The other reason why you should do these quests as soon as possible is because after you finish them, you'll be able to return to the Hall of Champions and activate an attunement. This attunement will drastically increase the drop rates of any weapon you choose. So for example, if you really wanted to get a good recluse, you can attune it here and it will drop far more often from Onslaught and the chests in the Hall of Champions. There are also other weapons that are going out of rotation, so this is your last chance to optimally farm for them before they go away. Here is the full list, but out of those, the Cataphract GL3 is probably the most important for PvE. The Edge Transit from Onslaught is better in some ways, but it's still important to have a Strand GL for certain Strand builds and synergies that may exist within Final Shape. Messenger and Igneous Hammer are also top PvP weapons right now, so you'll definitely want to get your hands on a good roll if you're an avid PvP player. The Iron Banner is dropping the new Tusk of the Boar grenade launcher, and although it's not going away, I would still highly recommend getting this before Final Shape. It's the first ever Strand Waveframe Grenade Launcher, and it comes with some absolutely incredible perks like Envious Assassin, Hatchling, Slideways, and Chain Reaction. 
These make it an ad clear monster for PvE, and I've personally been loving the one that I got from the most recent Iron Banner. Of course, we do not know the exact artifact mods that will be coming from the three episodes in Final Shape, but there's a good chance that there will be some strand mods that make this grenade launcher even stronger in the meta. Multimox ECX has also just returned in Iron Banner, so I'm sure my fellow PvP enjoyers will want to get their hands on a good roll of that weapon too. Iron Banner will only be available one more time before Final Shape, so be sure to get in there when you see that the mode is active. New, craftable versions of Whisper of the Worm and Outbreak Perfected are now arriving alongside the return of their beloved exotic missions, so I would recommend also knocking these out before Final Shape. Although we can't be certain about the strength of these weapons after the expansion drops, it's likely that they will at least be very solid contenders in the meta. As usual, all of the seasons from the past year are probably disappearing when the final shape drops, so if there's any seasonal weapons that you don't have or don't have crafted, now's the time to get those done. There are a few particularly notable seasonal weapons like a Doomed Petitioner, the only 3-burst Void Linear Fusion Rifle available in the game right now. This weapon is built for boss DPS phases, and for perks I'd pick up Reconstruction to get the auto-loading and overflow benefits that it provides, and I'd pair this with Precision Instrument. This perk demands accuracy, but you can quickly get a 25% precision damage buff after landing 6 shots. Although it requires some good aim, it rewards you with extremely high damage potential. The season you will want to focus most of your energy on from this year is the current season of The Wish. This season features The Coil, which is one of the very best seasonal activities we've ever had, and it's extremely rewarding as you run loops within Riven's Lair. These loops have you clearing out hordes of enemies, bosses, and other objectives while collecting shards that can be used to unlock different upgrade abilities for future loops. Definitely clear out your Postmaster before starting this activity as it really showers you with loot, and you can get the new seasonal weapons, reprised Dreaming City weapons, as well as returning Season 8 weapons. There are a number of these that are worth chasing. Starting with the seasonal weapons, you have the only craftable strand fusion rifle called Scatter Signal. For PvE, you'll want Slice to enable you to sever targets after using your class ability, and then Controlled Burst for that extra damage. From the craftable Season 8 weapons, Subjunctive is basically your Aikilos SMG replacement if you didn't get the 3.0 version of it last year. In the third column, you have Subsistence, and then you're going to want to pair that with Volt Shot for that spicy electrical energy. This season also introduced Appetence, the only legendary Stasis Trace Rifle. It's probably worth chasing on that basis alone, but there are a lot of interesting perks that you can get depending on your preferences. The third column has a lot of reloader perks such as Overflow, Demolitionist, or Clown Cartridge. The fourth column has Killing Tally, Headstone, One for All, and Wellspring all being worthwhile perks. From the previous season called Season of the Witch, the only real notable weapon you might want to get is called the Aramite. This solar fusion can roll with Envious Assassin, which can overflow the magazine, as well as the popular fusion rifle perk, Controlled Burst. This perk can give you a nice, albeit brief, 20% damage buff as well as a reduced charge time if you land every shot in a burst. The loot from Season of the Deep was essentially all garbage, which is too bad because the weapons look absolutely beautiful. Don't invest any of your time getting these unless you've done literally everything else. Season of Defiance is similar, but the weapons are slightly better. The Regnant Grenade Launcher was originally quite good, but it's now outclassed by the Edge Transit dropping from Onslaught. Overall for these seasons, feel free to run through their seasonal activities if you missed out on any of them or you just want to relive them one last time. They're likely all getting removed along with the associated triumphs and titles when Final Shape drops. The Prophecy Dungeon recently got a refresh of all of its loot and some of it is pretty incredible. I'd highly recommend getting your hands on a Prosecutor Auto Rifle, as this is currently the number one primary for PvP, and it may continue to dominate as we move into Final Shape. If you're a new or returning player who maybe doesn't have all of the best exotic armor, then the following is a great way to unlock some of your missing pieces. Ikora now offers 9 total different exotic armor quests, one for each Lyot subclass. Titans in particular have a really good lineup, with Dune Marchers, Syntheseps, and Heart of Inmost Light all unlockable from these questlines. Warlocks can get Crown of Tempest, Controverse Holds, and Starfire Protocol, the last of which was nerfed after being extremely powerful when Lightfall first dropped. Hunters have some nice choices as well, with Young Ahamkara's Spine, Sixth Coyote, and Graviton Forfeit. Feel free to pick up and choose which ones you need, and you can even get a few bonus weapons while you work through these quests. 
Ikora now also offers timeline reflection quests that give you other loot like the Monte Carlo exotic, and these quests are a great refresher if you're a returning player because they take you through the important events in the Destiny timeline. For example, you'll be able to experience classic missions like the death of Cade and also stuff from Beyond Light and the Witch Queen, and all of it is completely free. The final weapon-related thing you should definitely check off is the Riven's Wish questline that will be removed in Final Shave. These quests are super cool because you get to pick the loot that you want, and you can either get a Last Wish red border, an exotic armor piece from the past year, or any of these other things shown on screen. This is an extremely convenient way to get your hands on the exotics and the Last Wish weapons, even as a free-to-play player. The Apex Predator rocket launcher in particular is extremely strong, and I'd say getting it is more important than most of the other weapons in this video. It can get bait and switch and reconstruction, making it an absolute top option for sustained DPS. In addition to your wishes, the bounty from Hawthorne will also get you one red border per week, making it even easier to get your hands on this must-have rocket launcher. If you've noticed that you're running low on any materials like Enhancement Cores, Enhancement Prisms, or Ascendant Shards, now is probably a good time to stock up on those. This is important, because you don't want to be in the middle of the new Final Shape content, but then suddenly notice that you've completely run out of materials that you need to upgrade your new stuff. Of course, you'll then need to stop whatever you're doing and go farm currencies for a while, so it's just a good idea to make sure that you've got a solid amount of these in your inventory. In order to do so, you can go equip a Ghost Mod for Enhancement Cores or whatever you need, and then go farm activities like the Coil to replenish your supply of materials. You can also dismantle any remaining Matter Weaves you might have, as these will give you cores. Another strange method you can use is checking the Gunsmith, because if he just happens to be selling a weapon that is over level 5, you can just purchase it repeatedly and then dismantle it for a guaranteed Enhancement Core each time. A common practice that many Guardians do in preparation for every new expansion is called Bounty Prepping. While not strictly necessary for getting ready for a new expansion, it does provide some huge benefits upon release. The idea is you complete a bunch of bounties now, and then turn them in at the start of the expansion in order to instantly level up your episode pass and also unlock a ton of artifact perks and artifact power levels. The most interesting perks tend to be in the far right columns of the artifact, and you need to grind out a fair amount of experience in order to unlock them. By stockpiling bounties, you can help yourself unlock these more quickly when Final Shape drops, and also give yourself a free boost in power from the artifact. When doing bounty prepping, you want to make sure to focus on the weekly bounties first. Unfortunately though, you can't do them all in one week. It will take you multiple weeks to stockpile the Dreaming City Weekly Ascendant Challenge bounties. Europa also has three weekly rotating bounties like these for each of the Empire Hunts. You can also get weekly bounties from both Eris and the Lectern on the Moon, Shahan in the Cosmodrome, the Star Horse, Nimbus on Neomuna, and if you're in a clan, don't forget to pick up your clan bounties from Hawthorne as well. Once you are done with these, you can fill any additional slots with daily bounties from various sources in the game. You'll want to avoid any seasonal bounties as these are likely being removed with a final shape, as well as any repeatable bounties because those give less experience. Good spots to look for bounties are activity vendors like Zavala, Shax, Drifter, Gunsmith, or Saint-14, but you can also get them from planetary vendors like Failsafe on Nessus as well. You can get 63 bounty slots in total, but they are also shared with quests, so it's best to leave at least a few of these open for quests that you need to do, or the new quests that you will get in Final Shape. As I said, prepping bounties isn't something that every player must absolutely do, but it does give you a huge boost at the start of the expansion, and this is a big part of how some people can get like level 100 just within the first few days. Bounty prepping is also just a nice relaxing activity that you can do in the background while listening to music or perhaps watching one of my other videos. Quick disclaimer as well, everything in this video is subject to change, but I will keep a pinned comment with the most updated information for all of you watching. If you're also wondering which exotics are goaded right now, go check out my video ranking all exotic weapons for Destiny 2 PvP. I appreciate all of you guys, and until next time.